guys, welcome to another uh, project swap video. Today we're taking out the transmission. We got the engine out. Where is it? It's right there. Now I admit it's going to be much easier to take the transmission out since the engine is out. But if you're only taking the transmission out for some reason, then watch the previous video on how to take apart the, the top stuff here, the top mount, all the bolts around the starter. And that's that's pretty much it on this in this area here. You don't gotta do anything around here, obviously. So you first want to drain the oil, then you want to remove these axle nuts. These guys here. There's a tab, and on each axle on each side, there's this kind of cutout. You want to take a punch or something, maybe a small screwdriver. Well, I guess maybe a small screwdriver probably won't work, but some some kind of a flat punch and tap that net nut out so the actual nut can actually come off do it on both sides then you want to undo the the 19 nuts and bolts on the strut towers here so the knuckle will come towards you and then you can actually it's not, it's not going to be easy then you want to this way you want to remove towards the caliper you want to remove push on the axle and then kind of tilt it and remove it you know this way then what i would do I would remove the downpipe because the downpipe runs right through here. Remove the downpipe from the turbo, undo this exhaust bracket here, and what I have, what I should have done is remove the whole exhaust at once. You know, the whole exhaust with the downpipe. Instead, I did remove it here. Your choice, but I'm gonna have to remove this piece all the way back just the whole with the muffler and then i'm going to remove this heat shield here 12 more bolts two more over here and i'm going to be able to see the drive shaft and then uh yeah we're going to move on so exhaust and heat shield now heat shield out starter also out exhaust out now it's going to be these four 12 mil nuts. I'm gonna grab a long screwdriver, shove it in there through the U joint, hold on to it, and, you know, get it stuck on something, and then uh, just take a wrench and undo these nuts. Then you may want to use some kind of a maybe the same screwdriver and undo this. This kind of this plate is part of the differential, and this guy is the drive shaft separate these two then separate or uh, separate undo this these two 14 mil bolts and the drive shift will come out all right guys so now since down below all that's left is the mount and the, the bracket you need to come here and pop this open somehow i have no idea how all right i'm gonna have a seat and figure this out all right guys so to take this or just move it back you got two 10 mil bolts inside and one Phillips screw right here, right underneath here. If you move this to the left, come on now, it's there. Anyways, you should probably notice that uh, this is an STI center console and so is this because it says STI. Now the previous owner of the previous owner of the previous owner did this he i don't know maybe he had plans for this or he just liked the buttons that didn't doesn't do anything in his car no idea but so you undo these three bolts or two bolts one screw move this back then this just pops out and then you're presented with this now the reason why i'm doing it 
right up here because there's another way you don't need to get in here uh, is because I'm going to be replacing this well I was until I noticed this this shifter right now this obviously is aftermarket uh, one would say so but I'm still going to remove it by removing these four 12 mil bolts we got some nice tape over here okay guys so this is what it looks like now so under the 12 four mil, four mil bolts and this metal piece became loose and I kind of just took the rubber and just shoved it through down so it doesn't catch when we are ready to lower the transmission so all of this and uh, that's, that should be it up top we'll see about this all right now down below you gotta loosen this up you got two again 12 mil bolts here easy I actually did should mention this these were pretty rusty the bolts are up top I did have to come down here again and uh, spray them with PB blaster and then actually they came out fairly easy just going in and out so as you can see that's all of this is loose so if you don't want to do that you can undo the linkage here there's a bolt or a nut right over here it's actually a bolt up top and one here right here this guy here and all of this will you know just become loose I'm probably gonna end up doing that we'll see all right next step is to undo these four 14 mil bolts this transmission mount bracket from the body here then I'm gonna put up put a this transmission jack underneath and undo these two 17 mil bolts these two and this will you can see that front of the transmission is hanging over the resting on the cross member now that I look at that I kind of forgot about that I am going to have to gonna have to remove the linkage from here and now that I think about it some more I'm going to remove this just this bracket here by undoing it here and here also because I got to remove it anyways and put it on the six speed I think so this will give me more access to these to this area right here coming guys coming I ended up undoing the shifter 12 mil bolt from up top and this whole linkage along with the shifter just came down so that was easy the transmission mount is off and you can see it's already on the transmission stand now now you guys you wanna you know if you got a strap like this whatever you're using find a strap if you don't have one you wanna tie this thing down okay you don't want a, a wild transmission running around your garage right now the 17 oh yeah I need the gun what am I doing now we're gonna bring the oh shit you see you see what I mean that's exactly why you tie it up. Now do we need to we need to lower it a little bit? This stand kind of sucks. But it's what I got. Come on now. It's catching up top somewhere. Oh it's catching somewhere, I don't see. Come on now! Well, that wasn't safe. Yeah, this gun on the... Come on, what the hell? Dipstick, guys. It was a dipstick. All right, I'm gonna have to now. I'm gonna have to bring it lower. I should have put the the stand right over here. I, had, I should have removed this uh, this uh, cross member, 
and put the stand right, you know, center it. So now we have a problem. Well, not really. I'm going to show you what I do in this case. But uh, now it's free. Just got to get it out of there. All right, so the jack right on the cross member. I'm going to use a block of wood so I don't scratch the cross member because then it will rust. You know? That's the transmission falling over. Now you want to do this with a jack on wheels, not like a bottle jack, if you know what I mean. Because the you know the, the car is moving back actually, the front of the car is moving back because it's tilting back. So the if you look at the uh, wheels on the jack, they're actually the whole jack is actually moving forward. Quickly gonna check the jack stands in the back. All right, we're good there. Keep going up. That is it. Hopefully you can clear the car. This was uh, kind of kind of iffy, if I must say myself, <laughs> but we got it out. All right, so I did have to move the trans transmission from the jack because it was just way. I needed maybe three more inches, which I didn't have. So I just threw some wood right next to the the jack and just kind of slid the transmission off. I know. I mean, I was you know halfway underneath the car. The jack stands was st still in the same spot. So if it were to drop for some reason, if the jack would fail, uh, the jack stands would still catch it. And these are some heavy duty, way too much for this weight of this vehicle. So remember, as you drop it back on the jack stands, recheck, they're not gonna drop in the same exact spot, okay? I'm gonna show you something that actually the car moved a little bit on the rear. So this used to be, well, you can't see. This used to be in the center, the jack. This guy used to be right here. So it moved maybe an inch. So I'm going to, no biggie, I'm going to jack up the rear and just position, reposition the jack stands in the rear. And this is it. I'm going to put the five speed and the six speed aside and I'm going to compare them. All right, guys, it's late again. All right, let's compare the two. Now this one is a little bit higher. So to you, this one sh in reality, it should be a little bit smaller because you're looking at it closer but look how maybe like this look how much wider the six speed is compared to the five speed lengthwise six speed i would say is about well it's a little bit longer actually let's let's measure this all right length five speed 32 and a half six speed 35 32 and a half, 35. How many? Okay, we'll, we're gonna go around again. Okay, the casing, 10 and a half, under six feet, so right about here. Eight, seven and a half, eight. Let's see, midway, nine. Seven, and then the S, nine. I probably should not count the bracket, the brackets on the side over here. So, so the bolts. That is six, seven. Compared to what was it? Eight, eight and a half. Nearly nine. Yeah. So that's that's really the main reason why these five speed suck suck okay you put 
300 horses on your WRX or whatever and you're you know for a week it's going to be good so under this extra torque that your engine is not producing this transmission actually the casing twists and with the casing the in, inside gears all the bearings they're not true to each other for those split seconds you know that you're you know let's say switching gears launching accelerating especially in first maybe second gear you know so that's why and there's no way in hell that this transmission would take 400 wheel horse horses that's what this car is going to have not even for a day it will probably break during the tune all right so here you can see what i was talking about see you the slave cylinder pushes this fork this way and this comes forward right and that pushes the pressure plate in this you have a pin here you now imagine there was you know there's the bearing the throat bearing and you can hear the air in the slave cylinder so this will come this way and this will pull when you engage the clutch pull on the or when you disengage when you press in the clutch, when you disengage the clutch, this will pull. And to take this out, you need to undo this Allen nut here. And there is a 10... Oh yeah, you put a long 10 mil bolt in and you can pull this pin out. And that's how you remove the fork. And then you can actually remove the engine because the throat bearing will stay on the pressure plate so this is necessary you need to remove this pin this needs a little cleaning also just notice that this sensor is damaged and also this needs to be replaced so there it is that's it guys I hope this is helping you out you're learning something tomorrow well next video Weird differential. See you soon.